all over covering it. Good morning, Kendrick Perkins. Hi, guys. What's going on? What's going on? How y'all doing? Good morning. Good, good, good. What's Hi. up, Molly? Oh, oh, hey, hey. oh, you acting funny. <laughs> you in L.A., you acting funny. What's up, Molly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still a little drugged, but slightly now. Finally, I'm feeling a little bit better. So I'm good. That's what we like to hear. You know who's not so good right now? That's John Morant. Let's go, guys. Uh, Morant shouted in pain as he ran off the court, holding his right hand midway through the fourth quarter of Sunday's Game 1 against Los Angeles Lakers. X-rays were negative, but Morant described his status for Wednesday's Game 2 as in jeopardy. Meanwhile, on the Lakers' side, playing in his first career playoff game, starting guard Austin Rivers had himself a day. 23 points, 8 for 13 shooting. Austin Reeves, excuse me, shooting and was pivotal down the stretch in number seven Los Angeles, 128 112 victory over number two Memphis. Here's LeBron on Reeves. It's not surprising to me. Um, I knew from the first practice that we had when we grabbed him that it wasn't going to be long. Um, he wasn't going to be a two way player for long. Oh, man. Especially, you know, with everything uh, I've been through um, pretty much, you know, this season. Um, you know, my main focus was to, you know, be out there for my guys. Another, you know, um, incident where, you know, that's pretty much in, you know, jeopardy. So. Coach said that the x-rays were negative, so that's some good news. Any doubt in your mind you're going to be able to play Wednesday night in game two? Yeah. After the win, Magic Johnson tweeted this. If the Lakers continue to play like this, they can beat Memphis and anybody else in the West. Words of encouragement right now there from the great Magic. Uh, Stephen A., are the Lakers advancing regardless of Jaw status? Uh, I'm not going to say regardless of Jaw status. I'm going to say because of Jaw status. This series is over. As far as I'm concerned, the Lakers are winning this series. I think it's done. I'm looking at Memphis yesterday and give Kendrick Perkins credit because he called it like he saw it and picked the Lakers to win this series. I'm certainly not trying to take any shine away from you, Big Perk. Uh, but the bottom line is I thought that Memphis had a chance and would probably win this series in seven games. It was going to take John Morant being the star to pull it off, but I believe he's that kind of star that could have done it. They have no chance as far as I'm concerned now. With Steven Adams out, with uh, Brandon Clark out, and then to lose John Morant too, that is just entirely, entirely too much to overcome. Anthony Davis obviously was playing big boy basketball. I was petrified that the brother, when he could feel, when he was saying, I can't feel something in my arm because of the stinger and had to go to the locker room, I almost lost it. I was like, this cannot be happening. This just cannot be happening. This is not two years ago all over again where the dude gets hurt in the first round after being up 2 1 on Phoenix and he gets hurt. I, this cannot be happening. So I almost lost it. But then ultimately, he ended up coming back, starting the second half and doing what he's doing. He's too big for them. They have no answer for him outside of Jaron Jackson, who played the pre Pretty damn good game. But in the end, Jaron Jackson has no help on that front line whatsoever. And then you just look at the rest of the dudes. Dylan Brooks can ball. Desmond Bain can ball. Tyus Jones, we know what they bring to the table. But John Moran is just that dude. Without him, I'm giving the Memphis Grizzlies zero chance of winning this series. And to me, the reason why I say it's over is because there's no way in hell that you're coming back from an 0-2 deficit against these Lakers. And I don't see them winning uh, game two if John Morant can't play and listen to him. I mean, did you see, have you ever seen John Morant like that? Even last year when he got hurt against Golden State, I've never seen him like that. They say, yeah, their x-rays came back negative and stuff like that. But do you still see doubt or whatever? You're like, yeah. You know, he knows, and, and it's, a, it's a damn shame because with Adams, with Clark, with John Morant, um, obviously you got a hell of a series ahead of you. I, I think there's a foregone conclusion, Big Perk. I can't see any way uh, that the Memphis Grizzlies can beat the Los Angeles Lakers in this series now. No, I'm right there with you. And I was there at the start of the season, but, but here's why. I think, you know, when we look at guys like Austin Reeves, we continue to say, oh, you know, he's not like that. Or you continue to disrespect him in a way that you feel like he's not capable of having the moments that he had last night. And he has shown us time and time again throughout the course of the season that he's capable of taking over games. And he did that last night. See, when you have, to me, an average LeBron James and an average Anthony Davis is what you got and others rise to the occasion, you know that you are in trouble. 
and the Memphis Grizzlies are in trouble. See, the reason that one of the main reasons that I picked the Los Angeles Lakers was because of the absence of Steven Adams and, and uh, Brandon Clark. But now I'm starting to look at Dylan Brooks, and I'm starting to wonder, are you that dude? Are you that guy that you could actually put in an elite conversation, not in the same tier with the likes of a Donovan Mitchell or a Devin Booker or a Jalen Brown, but are you in a tier where you actually could start mentioning your name in the Jalen Bronson conversation from last year? Can we mention your name in a Jordan Poole conversation? Like, I'm starting to ask those questions, and as I'm looking, the answer is no. The answer is no. So Magic hit it right on the head when he's talking about the Los Angeles Lakers. If you look at their path on the way to getting to the finals, they're going to get through this series and win this series. Next up, they got the winner out of Golden State and the Sacramento Kings, which no, will, will be no cakewalk. But when I look at the depth of this ball club, when I look at Rui Hachimara elevating his game and just being able to knock down shots, Nothing more, nothing less. Either knocking down shots or keeping it simple, driving straight to the basket. That's the great, that's the pleasure you have of actually playing with LeBron James. And so when I see D'Angelo De Russell, I believe have a quiet 18 or 19 points. We know what Dennis Schroeder is capable of doing off the bench. Hell, Malik Beasley didn't even have a good night off the bench last night. But the Lakers just have so much depth. And when you have two superstars that have been there, took you there, I, I I don't know why we doubting them anyway, yes, eh? I don't know why you doubting them from the jump. You wondered about, you know, you let, let, let's call it what it is. Every single time Anthony Davis goes to the floor, you're praying he gets up. And, 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 and Anthony Davis and, and, and those close to him walk around with a heightened level of sensitivity these days. I don't give a damn because to me they're missing the narrative. There is no one who knows the game of basketball that has ever questioned the greatness of Anthony Davis. We know that when he's on the court, he is big time. The only question that has ever existed about Anthony Davis was his toughness as it pertained to his durability. When is the next injury going to take place? That's all. That is not something to get upset at the world about when they're questioning you because there's nothing else they've ever said about you other than your durability. That's number one. Number two, I love the fact that you brought up Irvin Magic Johnson. To Irvin Magic Johnson, I'm hoping that everything gets finalized and it's official and he's going to be a part of this NFL group that, that, that purchases the Washington Commanders led by Josh Harris. But at the end of the day, Irvin Magic Johnson, you're the greatest point guard in the history of basketball in most people's eyes for a reason. As much as we want to see you as an ownership, as, as a part of ownership in the NFL, you, you know what? You, you, you come talk about some basketball, Irvin Magic Johnson. We ain't heard from you in a while. A tweet doesn't <laughs> cut it, damn it. Okay, Irvin? I know you're in the gym mm -hmm. working out right now, getting all buff and all of that stuff. But damn it, a tweet isn't good enough, Irvin Magic Johnson. Remember that. The playoffs are here. We expect to hear more from you. Last but not least, Big Perk. Let's not talk about the Los Angeles Lakers in such glowing fashion that we forget to hold the Memphis Grizzlies accountable. You see, Dylan Brooks, this is why you don't chirp when you haven't done it yet. This is why Klay Thompson got annoyed at y'all because of the chirping, when he talked about four championships and y'all winning regular season games and you blowing, you going off and on. This is why Draymond Green clapped back at you because it's not just about skill, it's about luck and it's about timeliness and it's about opportunity. See, while Dylan Brooks was chirping, John Morant was on the court. Steven Adams was on the court. You had your crew. But anything can happen. And look at what we're talking about the Memphis Grizzlies right now. The second seed, back-to-back 50-plus -back win seasons, and your behinds are about to go home in the first round. We know it's because of injury. We know that if Steven Adams and Brandon Clark and John Morant was there, there would be more credence to your bloviating and your chirping. But at the end of the day, anything can happen. And until you get it done, you're supposed to shut the hell up. And Dylan Brooks didn't do that. And now that John ja Moran is out, and Steven Adams is out, and Brandon Clark is out, and LeBron James, who you said you wanted, 
because you wanted to send the, the legend home. Okay, well, now you're going to get your chance, Dylan Brooks, because ain't no Don mm -hmm. Moran to lean on. Now you got to step up. See, now we step back, Big Perk, and forget about Ja. We wish him well. We hope that he comes back because he's such a treasure to the game. We want him back, okay? And But we know he ain't going to be 100%. But if for game two specifically – on your home turf in Memphis, Tennessee, where there should be billboards of Ja instead of Elvis because he's dead. The fact of the matter is this, Dylan Brooks, what you going to do now? What you going to do now? This is the kind of stuff that Clay and Dre were talking about, and LeBron remembered what you said coming into this series. So now that you don't have Ja Morant to lean on, mm -hmm. what you going to do? Now, that's what we watch in game two. Is Dylan Brooks going to back up all the stuff that he was talking? We know he could play. We know he ain't no scrub. But as you said, see, are you that dude? Well, the ball's yours. It's in your court now. It's in yours now. Well, the guy ain't this. Well, no, well, let me add a little bit more to that. It's not just, it's not just Dylan Brooks. Desmond Baines last night, you know, trying to act like, you know, he said something along the lines to Rui Hachimara about, Oh, yeah, he did it for one game. But let's see if he could do it throughout the seven-game series. He don't have to. That's all he needed to do was help his one team game. win one game. What, what are you going to do? You went yeah. six for 18 last night. That's the problem that I have with the Grizzlies. Like, it's not the noise talking. It's accountability. How about stepping up and saying, you know what? I got to be better. I didn't shoot the ball well. I got to play better. I got to elevate my game. Not try to downplay or try to say, oh, well, let me see if he can do it for seven a seven-game series. He don't have to. He won one game. The That's rest it. is on LeBron and AD yeah. to take him on. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.